وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, sometimes people plan our downfall and we don't even know. Sometimes behind closed doors, people talk about us. They want to harm us and we don't know. And they are planning and plotting. And sometimes they begin to execute their plots. Suddenly we find out, wow, this person is doing this against us and that person may be doing this. And sometimes they begin to do it and we feel it and we know. They want to steal something from you. They want to attack you. They want to slander you. They want to drop you down because sometimes that's what some people do, especially when shaitan takes over. So what should we do in such a case? Now, there are many verses in the Quran that give us a lot of hope. If you look at Surah Al-Anfal, which is a surah where Allah mentions some of the wars and Allah Almighty speaks about the plotting of the people of Mecca at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he ends that verse with a beautiful capping that would help all of us. Verse number 30 of Surah Al-Anfal, Allah says, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Amazing verse. Allah says, remember the time when they were plotting against you, the disbelievers of Mecca, when they were plotting against you in order to keep you there in Mecca, perhaps, you know, in order to hold you, perhaps kidnap you, in order to kill you, in order maybe to remove you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يخرجوك. They I, they wanted to do one of these things to you. Either they would, you know, kidnap you, take you away, perhaps hold you against your will, or kill you, or maybe release you, try to remove you from the place. Allah says, but they plan, and Allah plans. Subhanallah. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ They plan and plot. They were plotting. But Allah plots. Allah plans. And who is the better of the planners here? Them or Allah? Allah. And that's why whatever they planned at the time, take a look at what happened. They initially decided to boycott the Prophet ﷺ. You know, sanctions against them. Three years, it didn't work. The Muslims were patient. Three whole years, no food and drink. They had very little. Then they decided, you know what? We're going to kill him. They tried very hard. They couldn't. Allah always protected his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they decided, we're going to drive him out. You know, guess what? They couldn't. They didn't succeed. Allah is the one who chose for the messenger to leave in such a way that they couldn't harm him. They tried to follow him. They, they almost captured him, but they didn't. You know, a miss is as good as a mile, as they say. They didn't capture him. They almost did. And he arrived in Medina Munawwara, where it became the seat of government at that particular time. It was amazing how Allah's plan worked wonders, always. So you do your best, but remember, these are verses of hope. They will heal us when we think about how Allah has protected his messenger, peace be upon him, not on one occasion, but on thousands of occasions. And the Muslims, the believers, and generally Allah would protect those who are good, those who are kind, and Allah will grant them always. So here Allah is saying, when they plan, and they plot, and Allah plans and plots. In fact, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plot and plan, and Allah plans. And who is the better of the plotters and planners? It's Allah. Allah's is not actually a plot, it's a plan. So Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And you know, sometimes when we have difficulty and hardship with people and we don't know whether to make peace with them or not, if they're inclining upon equitable terms to make peace with you, good terms, not that it's unfair, fair terms, to make peace with you, even if you're in slight doubt, Allah says, make peace with them, no problem. You know, tie all the rope, tie all the loose ends 
and make peace with them. Look at verse number 61 of Surah Al-Anfal when Allah is speaking about the enemy who was fighting wars against the believers. And Allah says, وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ If they are inclining towards peace, then make peace with them and lay your trust in Allah. Because obviously there will be an element of doubt, slight element from a human perspective. You might say, mm, I'm making peace with this person, but they might do this again to me. Well, you say, look, you know what? I'm laying my trust in Allah. I've tried my best. Obviously, if they're showing you their insincerity and it's clear, then you don't make peace with them just like that. No, no. Then you might want to stay away, like we said in a previous episode. But if they're being genuine and legitimate and you really feel they're trying, they're giving it their you know, utmost, then go for it. Bismillah. Lay your trust in Allah and go. Then in verse number 62, Allah tells you the other scenario. If after making peace with them, they happen to deceive you, look what happens. Allah says, If they then want to cheat you or deceive you, you need to know Allah is sufficient for you. Allah is enough for you. You made peace with them for the sake of Allah. Now if they want to deceive you, there will be something really good that will come out of that. Allah is sufficient for you. So this hasbuk Allah, you know, is very powerful. We normally say hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs. Get used to that at all times. And when you say it, think about its meaning. Allah is enough for me. Allah is enough for me, honestly. And He will look after me and dispose my affairs in the best possible way. No matter who's harming you, who's trying, what loss you've suffered, don't worry. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. So these are verses also where Allah Almighty is telling us uh, in a beautiful way to lay our trust in Him always. Now I want to move on to Surah At-Tawbah where Allah Almighty tells us that nothing will happen to you except that which Allah has written against you. You know, there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he tells us, he says, you know, What got to you was never meant to miss you. And what missed you was never meant to get to you. This hadith, look at it from all contexts and from every angle, and it is true. Whether it's wealth, whether it's a bullet, whether it's a relationship, whether it's whatever, whether it's a huge accident, anything. Allah says, if it got to you, it was always meant to get to you. Even if it's a message that got to your ears, always meant to get to you. What missed you was never for you. Now, I believe that firmly, because what we also know is, I'lam. You know, the hadith says, If you look after Allah's commands, Allah will look after you. If you look after the commands of Allah and the, what Allah has ordained, He will always be right there in front of you. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ You need to know that if the whole nation gets to you in order to benefit you with something, they won't be able to do it unless Allah's written it for you. And the opposite is true. If the whole ummah gets together in order to harm you, they won't be able to harm you a fraction unless Allah has written it against your name. Because the... Pens have been lifted and the pages are all dry, which means the taqdeer and the destiny is written. So here Allah says in verse number 51 and 52 of Surah Tawbah, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّنِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ It's an amazing verse. Allah says, say, Nothing will ever get to us in terms of harm except that which Allah has written for us. Harm or good, anything. Huwa maulana. He is our protector. Mawla means a protector. He is our protector. And wa alallahi and upon him do the believers lay their trust. You're a believer, you lay your trust upon Allah. So remember this, my brothers and sisters. Nothing will harm you except by the will of Allah. Lay your trust in Allah and you need to know He is your protector 
And if you're a true believer, it is that trust that will grant you or give you the healing and the hope. May Allah Almighty really bless every one of us and protect us. I will continue inshallah in the next episode. Until then, أقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين